I am Samantha Bee. Now, despite what you may have heard on Fox News, not everyone on the left wants to eat the rich. For one thing, the rich are high in additives like silicone and Viagra and whatever it is that changed the entire shape of Jeff Bezos' torso. I want to say powdered Vin Diesel. But in this age of extreme inequality, we do need to scrutinize how the super wealthy came by their billions and what that means for the rest of us. In a new segment we like to call Meet the Rich. Meet the Sackler family. Art patrons, cosmopolitans, and believe it or not, almost single-handedly responsible for the nationwide opioid crisis. The Sacklers aren't just rich, they are rich. They have wings named after them at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Louvre, an entire museum at Harvard, a center at the Guggenheim, and if the deal goes through, Post Malone will soon be called the Sackler Post Malone. <laughs> horrifying and yet somehow an improvement. So how do you get to have this many museums name shit after you? By having a fortune of $13 billion, which you, <laughs> whoops, largely made by creating the opioid crisis. The Sacklers family business, which they own in full, is Purdue Pharma, a company best known for developing OxyContin, one of the most prescribed and abused opioids in the United States. Before OxyContin, there was no opioid crisis because most opioid prescriptions were saved for only serious conditions like cancer. <laughs> I wonder what could have changed. There is no question that the marketing of OxyContin was the most aggressive marketing of a narcotic drug ever undertaken by a pharmaceutical producer. The FDA allowed them to make the claim that because it was a long-acting drug, it might, the stress being on the word might, be less prone to addiction and abuse than traditional drugs. There was absolutely no science to support this idea, zero. The Sacklers deliberately marketed a drug as possibly less addictive when they had no reason to believe that was true. That is insanely evil. Even drug dealers will say, don't take too much of this lady. I can tell by your blazer that you cannot handle it. <laughs> After this marketing push, the number of opioid prescriptions jumped from 76 million to more than 200 million over just 22 years. The number of oxycodone prescriptions alone jumped 850%. One family did that. One! The biggest thing my family ever accomplished was getting banned in three consecutive Olive Gardens. <laughs> When you're there, you're family, unless you're a family who steals other people's breadsticks. <laughs> that kind of accomplishment must be commemorated. Since they like museums so much, we made them one. Welcome to the Sackler Museum of Stupid Shit the Sacklers bought with their blood money. The opioid crisis that the Sackler family created kills roughly 130 Americans per day. That's at least 200,000 overall and probably many more. That means that the Sackler family has made roughly $20,000 per overdose death or one Toyota Yaris per death. Huh. Beep, beep. If I had caused that much suffering, I would never show my face in public again. But the Sacklers regularly flaunt their wealth, like in a 2013 Vogue spread on the Hamptons Weekend House owned by Mortimer Sackler Jr. and his wife Jacqueline Sackler. Oh, sounds lovely. Especially the garden where one of their children likes to grow herbs as a self-taught student of traditional medicines. <laughs> traditional medicines? What a great hobby for the more than 40,000 children children in foster care because of their parents' opioid addiction. Maybe they wouldn't be in this predicament if they just crushed up a wholesome yarrow root for mummy's headache. <laughs> oh. The Sacklers knew exactly what they were doing when it came to pushing drugs. In fact, even after Purdue pled guilty to misrepresenting OxyContin, then-President Richard Sackler, who wins the fiercely competitive title of Worst Sackler, came up with a game plan to keep selling pills. Purdue Pharma, trying to protect sales of its painkiller, OxyContin, made plans to fight back against the emotional messages from mothers with teenagers that overdosed. In an email in the court filing, the company's former president, Richard Sackler, wrote, we have to hammer on the abusers. They are the culprits and the problem. They are reckless criminals. Then he added, and I definitely hope nobody finds this email or they're gonna know I'm a real piece of shit. Rabble, 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 rabble. Oh my God, why would he put that line in there and why is he the 
Hamburglar. <laughs> the Sacklers were already disgustingly rich before they started the opioid crisis. In the 80s, Mortimer Sackler Sr. had his birthday party in the family's Egyptian wing of the Met. Do you know how rich you have to be to rent out the Met? And you have to buy a bat to fight off the paintings when they come alive at night. <laughs> By the way, at that party, he had the most horrifying cake of all time. <laughs> That is Mortimer Sackler's face on the Sphinx as interpreted by, I'm guessing, a contestant from Nailed It. But <laughs> terrible cake notwithstanding, they were rich enough to have the fanciest birthday party possible in New York City. They could have stopped there, but they thought, uh, let's go ahead and do an epidemic. The Sacklers actively tried to hide the strength of OxyContin from doctors, which in turn hid the risk from patients. But at least Purdue didn't directly tell patients that the chance of opioid addiction was far from actual fact. Some patients may be afraid of taking opioids because they're perceived as too strong or addictive. But that is far from actual fact. That video actually played in doctor's offices. You know, nothing makes me feel safer when I'm waiting for my test results than an X-Files villain standing on a blood red background telling me to take a pill. Now, some of the Sacklers think it's totally unfair to mention where their money comes from. Joss Sackler, because of course her name is Joss, launched a line of neon hoodies. Now these hoodies are definitely the most fashionable way to say, nobody ever gives me honest feedback. <laughs> Joss, who married into the Sackler family, was so mad that a New York Times article about her fashion line mentioned the opioid epidemic that she said, stop talking about who the men in my life are and review the fucking neon hoodies. <laughs> Joss, queen, no woman should be judged for what the men in their lives do. <laughs> I mean, unless that woman got the money for her fashion line from her husband's billion dollar drug dealership. But fair is fair, so let me take a moment to review your hoodies. Fugly. <laughs> now, not all the Sacklers I've talked about share equal culpability in the opioid crisis. For example, only Richard Sackler did this. Richard Sackler complained that he was getting too much information about the dangers of Purdue opioids after setting up one of those Google alerts for news about OxyContin. The filing says his staff immediately offered to replace the alert with something that provided more flattering stories for wow. him. If you're watching my show online right now, that's why the video is titled, Richard Sackler, Handsome Big Penis, Not a Murderer. <laughs> But the Sacklers do share one thing. Much of their vast personal fortunes come from the sale of drugs that have killed hundreds of thousands of people. Purdue Pharma is currently being sued and is reportedly considering bankruptcy to protect their assets. Well, fuck that. They need to give every penny of that blood money to addiction treatment. So, you pill-pushing aristocrats, save your weirdo cake money and sell your fancy Hamptons homes and give it all to help the countless people you've hurt. Maybe then your family can focus on its next real passion, making apparel for wealthy crossing guards. We'll be right back. <laughs>